Good morning. Welcome to our third draw along of this term. Hello. I see lots of people join us. Hi, Eden. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Steph. Hi, from Jessica. Thank you for joining us. We are drawing the Emperor Penguin today. Yay. So, hi, Emily, Jill and Freya. Hi, Alex, Eli, Delilah. Whoever else is joining us today? I say us. It's actually just me today. I've got a poorly Michael, so um, he's just chilling out at the moment. But um, when he's feeling up to it, I'm sure he'll come and draw the penguin when he's feeling a little bit better. So I'm going to be drawing the Emperor Penguin, this image we're working from. Hopefully you've already got uh, a copy of it and we're going to be learning a little bit about it as well. I can see some more hellos. So hello to Lunify Art. Oh, from Layla. OK. And hi to Kirsty as well. So I'm going to start off with a couple of facts, I think, just to give everyone an opportunity to turn up. Um, I know what it's like Monday morning. You can um, be in a bit of a flap trying to get organised for the week ahead. So we are studying the Emperor Penguin today, which is down in the South Pole. So with our Arctic fox and the polar bear, we were in the North Pole, we were in the Arctic. Now we are in Antarctica. So we're down the bottom of planet Earth. So hi, Iona. Hi, Willow. Hi, Why? Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. Hi, Maisie. Um, and we are going to be looking at specifically the emperor penguin. So there's lots of different species of penguin. I believe there's 18 different species and they can be found in other places in the world. But the emperor penguin is found in Antarctica. So wild emperor penguins are only found in Antarctica. They breed and raise their young mostly on fast ice, which is the name given to a floating platform of frozen ocean, which is connected to the land or to ice shelves. And from birth, they spend their entire lives in and around the Antarctic ice. Although very rarely, vagrants have turned up off the coast of New Zealand. So they can travel, but it's not that common. Um, hi from Tor. And Lunafy has asked, can I do the baby? Yes, we're drawing both. I'm going to draw both of them today. Um, Rachel put, actually, penguins love warm climates and you can more commonly find them on beaches in the southern hemisphere. So that will be different species of penguins. I've actually seen penguins in Australia. So, yeah, you can find them in warm climates, but the Antarctic, uh, the emperor penguin is found in Antarctica. Molly said, sorry, I'm late. late. No, you're not. You're just on time. You're here. If you didn't turn up, then you might be late. <laughs> um, so we're going to draw both. Yeah, Rachel, we're going to draw the what I'm assuming could be the daddy penguin. And the baby one as well, because it's just too adorable to leave out, isn't it? Now, you could work on your page portrait way. I've just thrown my pencils on the floor. That's a good start. You could work portrait way or landscape. I'm going to draw landscape because I think it's going to be easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I just got to collect my pencils off the floor. Um, but you can do it either way because really the image is fairly square, what we're working from today. Hi um, to Chelsea, Tyrone. Hello from... Rothlin, is that right? From on, oh, as in that's where you are. Oh, awesome. We're down in Kent. Anyone else joining us from Kent? So I'm going to start off by drawing, just very lightly sketching the outline. So I'm going to just want to try and get the proportions right. So this won't look anything like a penguin at the moment. This is just going to look like a big fat sausage. So that I'm starting in the right place of my page, and then I'm going to draw a smaller sausage next to it for the baby. So that's, I'm happy with how that is looking in terms of it's in the middle of my page and I'm not cropping anything off. I've not cut his head off or his feet. Hi from Kent, from Lucy. Hello from Verity in Northampton and Daisy's in Kent as well. Awesome. So I've got the, my two sausages, but we need to turn them into penguins, don't we? So I'm going to just start putting in more details, but it's still going to be quite sketchy and rough. I'm just trying to do this rough to begin with so that if it's not quite right i haven't wasted loads of time drawing in a lot fine details that i then rub out so i'm just going to put in the approximate shapes that i can see and not worry too much about the details just yet so i'm starting with a baby penguin you of course don't have to copy exactly what i'm doing you can do it in your own way there's no rules it's about having fun So that's roughly the baby penguin. I've probably done him a little bit too big, so I might have to extend Dad up a little bit more. Claire's from Weymouth. Jill, Emily and Freya from Kent. It looks like we're spread out all over the place, isn't it? 
So I'm going to just extend him up a little bit because otherwise his beak's going to be jabbing into the baby's head, which is not good, not what we want. <laughs> so, and this is why we do it rough to begin with rather than spend lots of time because actually I hadn't left myself enough room. There needs to be a, a gap between the, the dad's head uh, beak and the baby's head. So I have made the baby a bit too big, so I need to adjust that. So you can see why now I just do this roughly to begin with so that I haven't wasted loads of time and then I have to correct my work. So maybe I'll start with the dad this time. Get that big flipper in. Hi from Abba, East Devon, oh nice. And Scotland, wow. We visited Devon a couple of, well, in the summer. That's where we picked up our puppy from, Devon. So it's okay. I know someone commented last week about how it was quite comforting to see that I don't get it right and I correct myself as I go along. That's why we work in pencil and then and have a rubber to hand so that we can fix it and make it better as we go. I'm not going to be perfect first time, and to be fair, it won't ever be perfect, but it doesn't matter about making mistakes and correcting things. I think his head's too big. And I'm going to bring it down a bit further as well. That's a bit better. Hi from the Outer Hebrides. Lunar Fire, his wing is so weird, it, I don't know how to draw it. It's a, it is a peculiar shape, isn't it? It's more like a flipper that you might see on a wow. That's how I would describe that shape. Oh, this is challenging me today. I don't know about anybody else. I'm struggling a little bit with the shape. I think I've done the head too big. How do you draw fluffiness? So you don't tend, I don't tend to draw fluffiness, I tend to shade fluffiness. So when I'm adding colour, that's when I'll draw fluff. <laughs> so I'll show you when I get to that point with the um, baby penguin. At the moment, I am just going to try and draw the outline eventually. I'll get there in the end. At the moment, it's beaten me today. Just wasn't quite happy with the shape of the, the adult penguin's head. Now, the other thing I was meant to say is that if you are struggling with the outline, it's not cheating to trace. So if you wanted to give yourself a bit of a head start and then focus on shading and colouring, you can do that. And a lot of artists do do that. They, you know, even professional artists that are paid to do portraits will start off with a traced outline. So it's fine to do that if you're at all getting frustrated like me <laughs> right now. I can't trace because my paper's too thick, so it won't let me see through. We're getting there. That's looking a lot better. So you're saying it's very hard for you? Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not just me then. Where is the photo of the penguins? I can't see it. So if you go into the... Oh, thank you, Lunafy. There you go. Lunafy just put a link on for you. And we can see as well, if you zoom into the picture, if you've got it on electronically, you can see the adult penguin's foot as well, just in between him and the baby. You can't see the baby's feet. They're in the snow or probably underneath for all his fluff. And now that's 
try and draw a beak in. That's not right either. So then, sorry I'm late, but hi, hi. You haven't missed much because I've had to restart. <laughs> So, as I said, the emperor penguin is the biggest of all the species. And their numbers, they're not rare, but they're starting to become a little bit vulnerable. You know when I'm really concentrating because I go quiet and stop yapping. And obviously the baby's got a much shorter, stouter beak at the moment. I assume that that develops as he gets a bit older. The baby's beak is strange, isn't it? It does. It looks very, very different to the to the adults. I decided I've made my, my baby a little bit too skinny. He needs to be fluffier. Okay, we're winning just about. I'll say a couple more facts about our emperor penguin before we move on. So, as I said, they're the biggest, the giants of the penguin world. And they're one of the largest of all bird species. So they're approximately 120 centimetres tall. So if you look at your doorway, it's, say, half your doorway plus 20 centimetres. That's how big an emperor penguin can get. So they weigh about 40 kilograms but their weight does fluctuate dramatically throughout the year, and I'll explain why in a minute. But they would be dwarfed by the ancient mega penguins. Fossils recovered from the Antarctic Peninsula reveal that a colossus species of penguin, which lived about 37 million years ago, may have stood two metres tall and weighed as much as 115 kilograms. So that would be as big as your doorway. Can you imagine a penguin walking through your door and having to literally duck his head to get through? That is huge. It's mad to think that they were ancient penguins as well, isn't it? So now I'm going to get in this really quite significant, their markings, this is what makes them instantly recognisable as the ant for penguins because they've got these gorgeous markings with this bright yellow orange around their ears and they have a bit on their chest as well. And he's got a little flash of orange on his beak too. Can't really see the adult penguin's eye too well. I am going to put it in there though. I don't want to just shade black. There we go. I feel like my baby penguin looks like he's an evil genius or something. He doesn't look cute. <laughs> and that's normally to do with the placement of the eye. If It looks a bit mean. So it might be the angle of your eye needs adjusting if you've got an evil penguin rather than a cute one. So I'll go with that. Kirsty says, my brother says his adult penguin looks like an oversized coat hanger. <laughs> oh, well, I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> it's difficult with the early stages of drawing anyway, because, you know, you can you could say, oh, it's, it's, going, it's not going well, I'll, I'll stop drawing. But actually, when you keep going with it and it develops, it becomes what it's meant to be. The initial stages of drawing, it can look a bit, well, you know, look at my, right at the beginning, I had two sausages on my page. Now we're getting somewhere. We have two penguins. So if anyone's watched the film Happy Feet, 
It's the Emperor Penguin's Happy Feet. What's his, is that his name? What is his name? But anyway, the main, the main penguins in that are Emperor Penguins. Take the time to get rid of some of those scruffy lines. And then I can see what looks like one toe and even a little bit of a claw. But I'm not sure I'm going to put the claw in. I'm just because I think it might look too harsh on my drawing. So I think what I'm going to do is have the baby sitting on his foot. <laughs> It then means I don't have to draw that detail in. See, I've got artistic license when we do our own artwork. We can break the rules a little bit. How do I make it fluffy? So when you're shading, I'm not there yet. When you're shading, if you move in circular mov moment, ugh, circular movements with your pencil rather than colouring like this, that will help to give you a fluffy texture. That's how I do it anyway. I don't know if that's the right way. Just the way that works for me. That's it, Mumble. Mumble is the penguin in Happy Feet. Thank you. My baby penguin looks like a really fat sausage. Well, I think he does, to be fair. Oh, no. I, put, I tried to put a highlight in the eye, but again, it looks a bit off. So I've got to change where I put that highlight so it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, so I've got somewhat of my outline, so I'm ready to start adding colour. And as I add colour, I'm going to add in more texture and more details as well. So what should I start with? I think I might actually start with the yellowy-orange parts. Normally I start with the black, but I think there's so much black, I think I'll get the colour in first. So we've got, I've got some oranges and yellows. We'll start with this one. So the adult penguin doesn't look fluffy, so I'm shading in lines rather than worrying too much about creating a fluffy texture. And I'm building up the colour in layers. So rather than just press harder with your pencil, if you build it up in layers, it will look a lot better and you won't have white space in between the pencil strokes. And it's darker on this part here. So I'm going to try and fade it out. So this one area here, it's going to be up in more layers and then less layers to fade it out. And then I'm also going to bring in like a lighter yellow. It's like a lemon yellow, I think. So I'm blending an orange tone and a yellow tone together. And that yellow comes down onto his chest a little bit as well. And you can even see sort of almost yellow tones at the front of his belly too. So I'll put a bit there and all. Not too much though. So that's that. Now I'm going to pick up my black mm, and perhaps a grey because actually where the yellow then starts to fade into the black, it's it doesn't it's not jet black here it's grey. We've got a lot of grey tone here, so I'm going to use grey to blend, and then that will blend to black. Blend to black, rather. And because you've got the grey tones, that's why this black stripe will look more dramatic. If you kind of do it all black, then you wouldn't, you'd lose that detail, I think. So Emma said, I can't get mine right. Keep going with it. You don't have to keep up with us. You're not on a time limit. Don't give up. If it helps, you could just focus on one penguin.
I'm using the black to get that really definite, definite black stripe. Yours is so good. Oh, thank you, Jodie. Don't compare too much, though. Remember I've said this before. Oh, I've got a few years' practice behind me. Have another fact, shall we? So, they are the least common Antarctic penguin, with the estimates of their population being about 265,000 breeding pairs. Um, the WWF are funding research in the Antarctic because the more that they know about them, the better they can protect them. So they're not they're not rare, but they are their numbers are a little bit of concerning. Their colonies have been discovered and counted from space. So obviously the Antarctica is a huge space and to be able to figure out how many penguins we've got um, would be pretty tricky if you were doing that by foot. So they have sent satellites up in order to count, be able to count the colonies. So the British Antarctic Survey of Scientists has been looking for new colonists by searching satellite imagery for their guano stains on the ice. Guano is another word for bird poo, basically. So they're looking for traces of their poo to be able to determine how many colonies they've got. And there are now, now 66 known emperor penguin colonies around the coastline of Antarctica, with exactly half having been discovered by satellite imagery. <laughs> it's amazing what good science can do, isn't it? You imagine that being your job, but I'm just, I'm looking for penguin poo. Karen's put my baby, so cute. Oh, good, I'm glad. You haven't got an evil penguin, an evil baby penguin like I have then. <laughs> looks like he's plotting something. He still looks a bit evil to me. And don't forget on his um, flipper, the dad's flipper, there is like a white line. So try and keep that in as a detail as well. So somebody said at the beginning about the dad looking after the eggs, and you are quite right about that. So emperors incubate their eggs during the long, dark southern winter months. Courtship displays are intricate, and the female egg, female egg lays a single egg. They only ever have one egg at a time in May or June. She then passes it over to the dad to incubate, and she is off. She spends the next nine weeks at sea feeding. So over two months, dad is left alone with the egg and mum goes and feeds. The dad carefully balances the egg on his feet for between 65 to 75 days to keep it warm in a specially adapted brood pouch and off of the snow surface. Because obviously if the egg was just sitting on the surface of the snow, it would freeze and it wouldn't be able to, the, peng, the baby penguin inside wouldn't be able to develop. 
so he has to keep the egg off of the snow. And then it pops out, pops a fluffy chick after about 65 to 75 days. Obviously the baby penguin needs all that fluff to keep him warm in that cold climate. Could we draw a border collie one day? Maybe. We've got the whole of this year is already planned out with um, wildlife around the world. We did do domestic animals last year um, and we drew a dog, but we drew my dog that I had at the time, Roxy, which was lovely because she passed away a couple of months later and I had all these lovely images that young people had drawn of my dog. So it was a nice little um, memory of her. But she was mistaken for a border collie quite a lot. She was a cross between a German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever, but she looked like a, f a fluffy black border collie. So if you check out our YouTube channel, you will find the tutorial for that if you wanted to go back and do it. Tyrone, I love border collies a lot. So does Michael, actually. They're a popular dog breed. Very clever. I'm just going down to his tail feathers now. You can see some, a bit of length to those feathers. So I'm going to try and draw that with longer pencil strokes. What are we doing next term? I think next term we may be going to China. Um, I can't remember all the animals, but I know a red panda is in there. And I know that was a popular choice with a lot of people, Michael included. What's your channel called? It is Technology Triumphs, I want to say 3481. But if you, if you search Technology Triumphs, you'll find it straight away. So I've put on, I think pretty much all of our draw-alongs are on there other than this terms. So there's loads on there. There's loads of other free content as well. If you're interested, lots of crafting and creative tutorials on there. Lots of people very excited for the red panda. I thought that would be a popular one. They're my favourite animal from Gemma. I can't do the baby's beak thingy. I'm not there yet, so I can't give you any advice yet. I'll get there as soon as I can. Maybe come back to that bit. Wait till I've got there. And um, I'll be able to give you some hint hints and advice there, Deneen. Deneen, is it? And I've got his little foot there. Hmm... Now, although there's no black on the belly, I'm going to use the black to add a bit of texture and tone. And to show feather a little bit. And then I'll probably use the light grey a bit as well. Claire Jarvis, we all like red pandas. Mm. They just are just too adorable, aren't they? We definitely had to include it on our draw-alongs. How are we doing for time? Half past. Not too bad. Not too bad considering I was having a bit of a nightmare drawing him to begin with. And so we go to the head. So I can't really see this eye, so I'm just going to guess what I think it will look like. And then I'm going to put that flash of colour in for the beak. the black again and there is a bit of a highlight on the top of the dad's beak so I'm going to try and keep that in there because it sort of shows the shininess of his quite sharp beak isn't it when you look at it so 
I'm going to try and leave a flash of white to show that. Susie's found the video of the dog drawing thing. That's Roxy Dog. He's now up in dog heaven. I've got a new dog now and <laughs> she gets compared to the angelic Roxy dog an awful lot because she's doing that very much naughty puppy stage. Oh, what a small world. Jill's put Rosie and Maisie with, of, with Claire's office are our pen pals. I've been writing to them since I started being home educated. Well, what are the chances that you've, you've met on here as well? That's very cool, though. Where are all the pictures of everybody drawing your dog? Uh, they will be on the main Facebook page, but you'd have to scroll down quite some way because it was a little while ago that we did it. It'd be a bit difficult to find... I can't even remember when, when we did it now. It must have been before the summer because she passed away in June. So it'll be before June, they'll be on there. Okay. That's my dad daddy penguin. Could be mummy at this point though, because he's the baby's egg. The baby is hatched, obviously. If it was if it was showing an egg, then we'd know it's the daddy penguin. But maybe mum has returned. Who knows? So now to move on to my little floofy baby. And I know some of you were struggling a little bit with the beak, so I'm going to... Start with that after I've redrawn the evil eye because I am not happy with that. The more I look at it, the more I think, nope. I want a cute penguin. Yeah. <laughs> Still looks like he's plotting. Oh, that's cool. Emily or Freya, I'm not sure which one's writing this, but they've met up with their pen pals as well. That's really cool. What a nice experience for you. So, I've zoomed into this beak as much as I can. And I see it as a really short, stubby beak. And his sort of fluff grows over it. So that's how I'm drawing my beak on the baby, if that helps you at all. Doesn't look quite right to me. <laughs> I think I've made it too blunt. I think I need to make it a little bit more of a point on the end. Hmm. Something like that. And then I'm going to shade it using grey. You can see a lot of grey in there. And then black. So it's not jet black like the dad's. You've got a little black bit on the tip of it as well. Something like that. Oh, Steph's doing her penguins at rainbow. That's cool. That's like as far from this as it could be because it's very black and white, this image today, isn't it? A 
I should have sharpened this black a bit more before I started. I've lost the, lost the tip of the pencil. It's difficult to get the detail. And then I'm going with some grey floof around the eye. Although it's white, the pattern is white. It's not pure white. There is definitely grey in there. So I'm putting a little bit of grey. And I'm starting to shade in that circular motion to make it look a little bit fluffier. And then the black. Jodie, bye. I re thank you. I really enjoyed this. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to sign your picture and do not forget to pop your picture online 6pm tonight if you'd like some feedback as well. Hopefully you join us next week when we are drawing the seal pup. Another very cute fluffy one. Natalie, so sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you. She was a good dog. She lived to 14. So we were very lucky with her. And we were with her when she passed away. She didn't have to go to the vets. So it was as good as you can hope for. That's the thing when we have these pets. We love them. And sometimes, well, most of the time, they leave us, don't they? So it's the trade-off for having an awesome anim animal visit us is that we have a little bit of heartbreak at the end of it. So I'm really careful with the penguin. I'm, I'm looking all the time at the picture at how the colours change. So he's gone from the white patch around his eye to now it's black, but it will then fade to grey as well. So I'm going to try and make sure I follow that as closely as possible. And I'm doing that circular motion to try and show fluffiness. Bo loves seals. Oh, good. So you'll really enjoy next week's one then. And I'm carrying on using the black to create some of the darker tones that I can see around his flipper before I then pick up a grey. And I'm going to be um, adding water to my picture because I've used watercolour pencils, so I'm going to be here a little while yet. Oh, my hand's cramping up. No, let's get that. So now I'm switching to the grey. So I'm going to try and blend that grey out of the black so that you don't have like a, a line of black and then it turns grey. I want it to sort of look like it's naturally fading to grey. It's like you're scribbling really to get that sort of curly, uh, fluffy effect. Remember to build it up in layers where you can see darker bits of where his back is touching his dad. You can see a bit of a shadow there, so build it up in layer there as well. And don't be afraid to leave some highlights. So here on the front of the flipper, on the picture, is quite, you can see the sunlight's catching it. So I'm gonna leave that mostly white to show that sort of depth. Ah, oh, Rachel's put about our, our pets. They may not be your best friend for your whole life, but you're their best friend for their whole life. Oh, don't, you're gonna set me off now. <laughs> you're absolutely right. I did pull out a blue from my pencil tin as well because I think I might try and get some of the snow tone as well and add a bit of colour. Because I thought as well, yeah, by the end of this, we'll have four gorgeous pictures of Arctic and Antarctic animals and it makes a nice set. 
So if I use something that draws them all together, so for example, having blue in the background, that makes it look more like a set of drawings as well. What dog do I have now? Becky said, I have a nightmare dog. <laughs> I have a demon dog. She is a cross between a German Shepherd and a Czechoslovakian wolf dog. So she's a handful, because German Shepherds are handfuls anyway. Um, but the wolf dog in her makes her very, very clever. I mean, again, German Shepherds are very clever. Um, and basically, she'll only, want to, she'll only do something if she wants to do it. And that's a trait of the wolf dog. They, they can't... Um, they, they can be trained, absolutely, but they, they require a lot more input and work. <laughs> and she's big, so she's only just come up to seven months old and she is bigger than our last dog already. Tyrone, I'm done. Thanks a lot, Technology Triumph. You are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Beans, this is so hard, but it's good to have challenging stuff, isn't it, Pip? It's exactly that. The amount of times since I've started doing these draw-alongs where I've gone, oh, I've never drawn one of those before. But then I think, well, how can I get better of an artist as an artist if I don't challenge myself and don't try and do new things? If I'm stuck to drawing the same thing over and over again because I know I'm good at that particular thing, that's great, but I'll never be able to draw a penguin. This is the first time I've drawn a penguin, and it's... It definitely challenged me trying to get the shape of it. It's a very difficult form. So, yeah, absolutely. All of us are always on a learning journey. And if we stop still and just take the easy route all the time, we'll never get any better. Kirsty's put, put, yep. Or else you don't improve. That's exactly right. I'm done. So, thank you so much. See you soon. No worries. Don't forget to upload. And hopefully, we'll see you next week. So I'm just putting in some more dark tone just to create depth and make it look more 3D and realistic. So rather than just all colour it in block grey, I'm looking at the picture and trying to see where the shadows are. I'm popping them in as well. So I think I might be at the point where I can start adding water up. But before I do that, I'm going to put in some of the blue, like I said, as snow. I know the snow isn't blue, but it's a nice way of adding colour to the picture, and we know what it represents. So I'm just putting some colour on the page to show them in a cold, icy climate. <laughs> Beans, but your dad is incredible, but I'm not comparing. Good, good job. <laughs> Too much black. Can you compensate with that by putting a white or a grey on top of it? Will that tone it down if you think your picture's too dark? So, where's my paintbrush? Here we go with the water. And this, what this will do as well is make the colours much more eye-catching and um, stronger. Oh, I need to share some more facts with you. Emperors are uniquely adapted to survive harsh conditions when temperatures can drop down to a bone chilling minus 50 degrees. So if you think, you know, zero degrees is freezing temperature or frozen temperature. They have two layers of feathers, a good reserve of fat and proportionately smaller beaks of flippers than other penguins to prevent heat loss. They also have feathers on their legs so their ankles don't get too chilly. Even their feet are adapted to the icy conditions, containing special fats that prevent them from freezing and strong claws for gripping the ice. But most remarkably, colonies of adults and chicks work together to huddle for warmth. 5,000 or more tightly packed adults and chicks shuffle around so that each takes a turn on the outside of the huddle where it's cold. So this is in complete contrast to, to, contrast to their quarrelsome and territorial neighbours, the, the Adelie penguins, which if you've seen um, Happy Feet, the Adelie penguins are the little ones in there. So they work as a team, the emperor penguins, in order to keep warm, and they take turns so that you haven't got the same penguin stuck on the outside of the group at any length of time. So everybody gets a fair shot of being in the huddle and warm. Good teamwork.
Kirsty has put, has it ended? No. Have we gone offline? <laughs> Can anyone hear or see me? I can hear and see. Okay, cool. I, I nearly panicked then. So we'll keep going. It might be something at somebody else's end. So I'm trying to make this a solid colour because that's how it looks like on the picture. It isn't too much tone. It's pretty much solid black to the point where we really can't even see his eye that clearly at all. Get that flash of orange in there. And then I'm going to go to the solid stripe as well. I'm using the same technique. I want that to be a really bold feature on my drawing. That is put by. See you later. See you later, Nelly. Emperor penguins are the Olympic divers of the bird world. The deepest recorded dive was 564 metres, which is just, I can't even imagine that as a dive underwater. That's equivalent of two nearly two times the height of Europe's tallest building, which is the, London, the Shard in London. So that is an incredible, an incredible distance. And the longest recorded dive was nearly 32 minutes. So there was 32 minutes diving down. I think I can dive underwater for about 20 seconds, seconds before I start to panic. I can't breathe. Emperors feed mostly on Antarctic silverfish as well as other species of fish, krill and some squid. An adult penguin eats about two to three kilograms per day, but on a good day they can eat twice as much to build up their store of body fat for the long winter or for feeding their chicks. Susie's put, finished, I like it, I'm glad, that's what we all, that's what we want to hear. And Rachel has said done as well, I assume that's, is that been? You can still hang out with us, I've still got some more facts to share. <clears throat> oh, got a frog in my throat. But if you've got somewhere to be, you're not obligated to stay either. But don't forget, if you do want some feedback, <clears throat> to set a reminder for yourself for the post that goes up this evening. I think I might overrun today <laughs> because of that nightmare I was having right at the start, getting the shapes right. Let's see. No, no. I'm rushing now. You're a bit jumpy for me. Is that the connection? Has it been a bit rubbish today? It might be something to do with the winds, to be fair. I was waking up expecting to see our trampoline missing, but it's managed to stay put. Clean my brush, brush properly. A bit of grey on that now. We 
it keeps stopping the video and then carrying on. Oh no! I can only assume it's because of the wind, unless one of my children has gone on the internet. <laughs> In which case, I'll be having words. What watercolour and paper and pencils do you suggest are best? Well, I don't know what's best. I can tell you what I use. I could if I had my pad. These are the pencils I use. I use Castle Arts pencils and I've got a great big tin, but I think they, they come in smaller versions as well. And I've lost my pad. But I think the pad is also Castle Arts. It's watercolour paper, so it's, it's thicker and more absorbent. And so if you're working in watercolour, Obviously, it's more suitable. If you use watercolour or any kind of paint on standard paper, like from a printer, you'll get a crinkled effect. So this prevents that from happening. So even when I'm using the water on the baby, because I want that curly effect, even the paintbrush I'm using in a scribble motion so that I can still get that fluffy effect on his feathers. I don't know that you can call them feathers at this stage, actually, thinking about it. Joe's put, we haven't noticed any lag here in the northern office of TT. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> Jill and Emily and Frey have put, I hope Michael feels better soon. Yeah, I wonder if he was just trying to get out of doing some work. <laughs> he had a lot of home study he's got to be doing today. Mondays is the day for that. I did, know, I did hear him playing his electric guitar a minute ago, so... Hmm. What are we next? What's the next animal we draw in? Lily has put that is the um, seal pup, so a fluffy seal pup next week. Again, another challenge for me because it's mostly white and I've never done one before. So I'm going to be in the same boat as you guys, but we will have fun with it. If you have finished, I have still got a couple more penguin facts to share with you. So do feel free to hang about if you want to learn some more. Has anyone else got penguin facts that they'd like to share? It doesn't have to be about the emperor penguin. Yeah, when I saw the penguins in Australia, it literally was on a, an island that was called Penguin Island. And they were really, really little penguins when I saw um, no one could see them, everyone was just walking around, not, not finding them. And there were wooden walkways everywhere with steps leading up and down. It was a very hilly little island. And I took a moment to stop and look underneath the steps, and that's where a lot of them were nesting. So I saw loads of baby ones up close. Jill, Emily and Freya saw a seal when walking the dog on the beach. Was that Minster Beach on the Isle of Sheppey by any chance? That's cool though. Oh my goodness, if I was walking Mako <laughs> yeah. and she saw a seal, she, she likes to chase everything, birds, leaves, everything. So it would have been an absolute nightmare. We enjoy the penguins at Wingham Zoo. Oh. There's a type of penguin called the fairy penguin and they're the smallest kind. Oh. How small were they? I wonder why it's called a fairy penguin. Is it, do you think, maybe just because of its size? So a couple of more facts for you. Male emperor penguins will not eat for up to four months from the time they arrive at the colony to breed until the egg is hatched and the mother returns to feed. So they lose almost half of their body weight during this time. They need to rely entirely on the reserve of body fat that they've built up during the summer feast to survive the long winter. So they have to gorge themselves as much as possible in summer so that they can 
fast for four months. Can you imagine? I can't, I can't, I struggle without eating for four hours, let alone four months. Um, and emperor penguins can climb steep ice cliffs. So you said earlier about their claws, and this helps them to um, climb up onto ice cliffs, and they've been known to breed up on ice shelves. In 2013, British and Australian scientists discovered two emperor penguin colonies on ice shelves at Barrier Bay and Larsen Sea, with the further two temporary colonies on the Shackleton and Nickerson ice shelves. This may be a useful adaptation strategy as Antarctica warms due to climate change, but it might not help them in the long term if the fast rate of warming continues. So if they've run out of ice to breed on and live on, they're trying to adapt, it sounds like. They're also called blue penguins because they are blue. Oh, well, I need to Google them now. So don't forget, with your artwork, it's not finished until you sign it. Claim it as your art, your beautiful artwork. I hope. I, I surprised myself how quickly I was able to paint that baby penguin then. I sort of caught up with myself there, didn't I? So I'm going to just rub out some of the pencil marks, the rough pencil marks that you can still see. Because now the colours are all on there. We've got our two penguins. Could be mum and baby, it could be dad. I think it's a dad, I'm gonna go with that. They do a lot of our work looking after the eggs, don't they? And starving for four months. Dawn's book mapped. Sewell, is that it? Has a lovely book out all about penguins with facts and amazing watercolour paintings of them. Oh, cool. And penguins have binocular vision. They can see all colours but are sensitive to violet, blue and green wavelengths of light and possibly to ultraviolet light as well. I wonder if that helps them when they're hunting. If they can particularly see blue and greens, does that help them to see the fish? I wonder. Because sometimes those scales can reflect those colours, can't they? Well, that is, that is everything for today. So thank you for so much for joining us. I hope you've got on well with your painting or drawing whatever medium you've used please do feel free to upload this evening between six and nine and i'll give you i'll pop along and give you some feedback um i love seeing what you do even if you do things completely different to how i do i, I think it's great to share in that sort of creative journey um next week is the last of our polar regions draw alongs so we're going to be finishing with the seal pup we take a little break and then we come back and we're going to be traveling, virtually traveling to China to study some animals from China, including the red panda, which I know a lot of you are excited about. So yeah, thanks for joining us. Hope you have an awesome rest of your week and that this has set you up nicely. Um, it certainly has me, definitely my favorite point of the week. Um, I hope to see you all next week. See you later.